Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your, your host. Folks, I'll just be right up front with you and be very frank. We've got some major, major issues here confronting us here in the Portland metropolitan area. We've got, major, we've got an election coming on. We've got several elections that are coming on. And right up front with it, we've got to make sure we get the type of leadership that we're in need of to solve some of our problems. This is not, this is not about, uh, uh, i.e., how does one look or personalities, how much money you have. We need to find people that are, are talking to solutions to the issues. Yes. One, they can state what the issues are and then respond to how they're going to solve that issue. So my key point there, my point to you is, is this. Ask them for their resume. What have they done? Make sure you bring that. What have they done? That's across the board. Yes. Whether it be the city of Portland, people running for city city of Portland position, or whether it be for the county, whether it be for the governor, whether it be for the for the Congress, whatever. We need true leadership today. We we don't have time for fake leadership. I mean, those days are gone. We really need something. We got issues now on on housing and our youth, our seniors. I mean, you go right down the line. So I'm just making that point across right at the introduction of this show, because that's exactly what we're going to be doing. I mean, the folks that are going to be appearing on this particular show are going to be asking for one thing. One, do, do you understand the issues for whoever, whatever position that you're running for? And two, do you have the background to solve those, to solve those issues? Okay, that's the bottom line. That's what we're going to do here. If they, if they can't, in fact, what I'll normally do, I'll share that with them up front. If they don't have it, guess what? They won't appear. <laughs> because I'm going to be asking those questions. Very, very important. And here, this is, and so um, that's how I'm starting it off that way. And the other thing is that uh, vets is something is that I'm very, very proud of the fact that I'm servicing and whatever, and I'm ready. I'm, I'm in business and right up front with it. Every month I'm going to be doing a show just on vets, wow. trying to get them to get their benefits. Very, very important. A lot of these guys, are, and men and women both, don't know the, about the benefits of the VA. The VA's got a lot of benefits, they've got a lot of services and whatever, and if you spent some time in the military, whether you were overseas, in war or whatever, if you served, you served. And the bottom line is that those benefits are there for you. And if you don't work at it and keep it, you won't have it. So therefore, in all due respect, I'll be reaching out to vets. That's one of the things we're gonna be doing. Like reaching that. out to vets throughout the state of Oregon and elsewhere. But the bottom line, that will be one of my jobs. And so as you can see, you've got two booklets here. These are, these, are, these, are, these are things that are there for you, available. But let me give you this one number. And you can call this about vets, about certifying. You can do that over the phone just wow. to find out whether or not, I'm so excited fact, about that. Yeah, well, whether or not you, in fact, are a vet. They'll ask you the questions. Normally, it's your last four, your Social Security number, and they'll ask you some questions. And after that, you may have to go up to the Hill or go down to a VA unit and, ask, and then go follow up through, if you will, with the process. But that one number that I'm talking about right now is 1-877-222-VETS. 1-877-222-VETS, V-E-T-S. And you just dial that number, and you get online, and you go from there. And if not that, you got my number, and I'll I'll tell the guys in the, in the mm -hmm. I'll tell the guys up there in the studio in the in the in the control room to put that number down and put that on the screen uh, for the duration of the uh, of the show. One eight seven seven two 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 vets. Okay, and my number, you know my number, five zero three seven zero one. 0457. That's 503 701 0457. So if you have any difficulties about getting to these folks and talking to you, or you're a little scared or whatever, you can call my number and we'll talk, okay? So that's it. But these books are there. Let's put that aside, okay? All right, you got that done. All right, what we got now? We got, we've got someone, we got a favorite person here on our show. She's been on our show before. I mean, she, talking about an active person in, in the community. Now, that's what I'm talking about with reference to someone who's actually doing something. This lady came here as one of the associate superintendents of Portland Public Schools years back. And then as time went on, she did, so much, she did such a fine good work. The person who brought her here, all of a sudden, she, they went somewhere else, yeah. if you will. And then all of a sudden, she's decided to stay. She wanted to stay in the community and work with those kids, et cetera, et cetera. And she went to Jefferson High School. She went to Jefferson High School and was principal of Jefferson High School. She had all kinds of accolades. In fact, you can go to the history of the Oregon Voters Digest and you can see her and the actions, the things that she was doing here in this particular community. And I'm talking about Cynthia Harris. 
Cynthia Harris. She was working with small business. She was getting these kids. In fact, we were even working on, yeah. on getting Voc Ed in the school. Back in the school. Well, yeah, back, back in the school. I remember that we, trip. We, we visited the trees. Go, we went down to the trees yeah. no, in, in Carvallis. Oh, Carvallis, Carvallis yeah. yeah. we went down there and was working on that. That's amazing. And, and we were getting things going. And guess what? When she left, guess what? We still don't have Voc Ed. That's amazing. We don't have Voc Ed. Isn't that sad? But we were there. Remember that yeah. time? We did that. This is this lady. This is this lady right here. She didn't sit. Well, I understand that they have really had a lot of success. So sometimes you may build the house, but you may not live in it. That's right. I, I got you. <laughs> so got then you. we have to go build another house. There you so go. I'm building there you another go. house I, I right got you. now. That's going to be your next shot. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you want to come back to the table. Because yeah. we need to go Well, you said something schools. very powerful today, and I just want to tag that yeah, just a little sure. bit. When you talked about the kind of problems we have, I was really reflecting on that in my quiet time this morning. And the, the, what you raised for me, um, I say all the time, I have a little saying, and, and it's inexperience acts the same way. Mm -hmm. And you said for the problems we have today, mm -hmm. we need um, experienced mm -hmm. leaders and we need to look at their resumes. And I think that's so critical. One of the thoughts, because I grew up in church, so I'm pretty much... Um, always focus on what happens in the church world and I, on my Facebook I see these people like uh, constantly um, putting their little camera on churches and they're empty and I'm thinking why are those churches yeah. why would you even put that exactly, on exactly. You, and then I'm, what really came to mind like having been in one church for most of my life I saw it go from a 500 membership to almost nothing and I think Leadership is so important. So if you constantly work with your friends and constantly work with people that can't pull grants together, constantly work in experience, putting somebody in right, experience right. can be a failure after yes, 25 yes, years. Yes, yes, yes. And and because I've seen that, I'm just not willing at my age mm -hmm. to to overlook that experience especially for favoritism. Now. Especially now. Oh, well, I, we can look at the United States and see what's happening when when you think you know yes, something and you yes, haven't done your homework, yes, even yes. though we may want the person to have yes, experience, we yes, may think, yes. but if they don't have it, they just don't have yes, it. And yes. that's one thing when you operate at the high level, you can't get it. No. You got to no. listen to other people and no. guess and lie yes, and cheat. So when you said that, I really want to be flat myself with these upcoming elections. Yes. I want to study. I want to listen. I yes. want to be present to people. Very, very so important. I think that was just so such a wonderful comment. Well, thank you, Cynthia. Yeah. And in all due respect, you tend to express the same thing to me. Yeah. You've always done that with, with regards you. to what you're doing. Yeah. Because you are very results oriented. And yeah. You're, you're issue and one oriented. of the things I was really thinking because I mean I'm so excited about the people that are are coming. We have such a tight program. We can't have anybody else on it. But just even this music fest for the last 20 years. This is the last one of 20 years. And uh, the theme is bringing the love in 2017. And it's really about we give back. Mm -hmm. And so your organization is one of the organizations that was selected, and we will fundraise up and through February. Mm -hmm. But anything coming after the expenses, they will go to Passing Art, which I'm very much interested in the arts. I was a commissioner, mm -hmm. very much interested in that. And then um, there's a young man I met that does art, and he travels to Russia, and he's bringing art. So he's going to be in two of our schools. And then there's your program, which I think is so wonderful. I've been really looking at the situation with the veterans, and mm -hmm. I'm so excited about that. And well, whenever I go to Washington, D.C., I don't fail to go to the yes, wall. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. Well, this is a joy. It's a joy, like I said, working with you, because in all due respect, you, as you notice, as she, as, she, as she introduced herself, she just jumped right into what she was oh doing. Oh, my God. Because she's got <laughs> such a background. I wanted her to stop for a moment and just sort of share with you some of the things that she's done, even make, make mention about uh, her time at, at Jefferson High School and mm -hmm. what, she, what she was doing and how she had things all laid out and some of the accomplishments and, and mm -hmm. things of that nature and then how she got into where she's at right now and she, but she's done a number of other things during that particular yeah, time. Yeah, well, you know, the right? one thing I do want to say is um, Jeff, uh, that my experience in Oregon came at the end of my career. I had already been the youngest principal in the Oakland wow. School. I was highlighted and very spoiled in my mm -hmm. city. You mm -hmm. know, I was a commissioner, self-esteem commissioner, fine arts and just every committee in New Oakland. And so I was everybody's it girl. Right. I was um, I was the first year round school. I was principal at 26, I think, wow. and then I went from there to the central office over staff development, and then back to another school. And so I had all those experiences when I came to Oregon, which put me, I think, steps ahead of people 
And um, I was heavily recruited to come to Oregon. I think most people yeah. don't know that, but yeah. I, I don't think I've applied for very many jobs well, you know, in my you know, the, <laughs> lifetime. I, I, I will say this about this lady. I'll say this about this lady. Here we were going through all these issues about recruiting, uh -huh. recruiting, the, i.e. replacement for, you, for the mm -hmm. person that brought you here, mm -hmm. aspect of it. And here we've got someone like yourself, if you will, with the background and with the and with the credentials, if yeah. you will, PhD and the whole nine. But were you but ever called? Were you ever called? Not only was I were not you ever called. No, but what? But here's the thing: you two have to look at. I, I never really asked, and I, I never that. went after it. I know that because that is really a huge commitment to really take on something yeah, like that. Yeah. And so some of us are more honest about it. You know, I was like, I don't know if I can really yeah, pull that yeah, out like yeah. that. I think I would have definitely been on the education side of it, but I don't know where I would have been on the mm -hmm, political mm -hmm, side of it. Mm -hmm. So we, so somebody stepped up that was well on the political side. I don't know how much she was on the educational side. So it's a really tough job. Well, think and about it's a this. tough call. But think about this. You see, when you got the, when you, it's about the issues of the kids. It's those classrooms, yeah, those yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where 90% of the effort should come from. That's where it should definitely I mean, come. That's other, where I would have been. The, the other 10% of the politics, it'll take care of itself. You see what I'm yeah. saying? And so, but a person with your kind of a background, yeah. that's where I'm coming from, from the standpoint, the focus is in the classroom and those kids and them, them graduating, if you will, and pre mm -hmm. being prepared, if you will, to deal with the world and become, i.e., uh, employers, employees, and that kind of thing. Yeah. So that we've got a, a thriving economy. But the bottom line, under today's criteria, it's kind of like 90% politics and 10 cent, 10 percent well i the think kids. that what you're saying is where we have to go yeah. like one of the things yeah. i used to say when i was in california is for breakfast the principal should be reading the test scores yeah. like if you know you've been in a place for a while and there is no movement something right. should be done about right. it right. and then we all we can do something right. about it and and i go back to the point of what you're talking about the current politicians right. and the resume I think we should start looking at that. I personally don't know if I'd ever look at very much other than that little form that comes yeah, in the mail. Yeah. So there are, are campaigns I've worked in, in the past that I won't work on now yeah, because yeah. I've really seen a Politics. lack of integrity with mm -hmm, people. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not stepping up on those yes, campaigns right, anymore. Right, right, so I right. agree with you on good, that. Good. Well, look, hey, let's, let's get down to Okay, I mean, my, you, 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 my you, real you, deal. Yeah, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to be coming here more often anyway. Because okay. we got some other things. We're going to, because once we get into the, the politics of this thing, mm -hmm. I'd like for you to come on the show because at times you might be able to be a part of it. Well, the yeah, interview. I mean, okay. I'm the outgoing second VP for the NAACP. So I do have See political that? ideas She's that I work with and I'm with Jeez. Nan, um, yeah. the Al Sharpton's group, and I listen to every set. I don't have a TV in my house. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. So I listen to Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson every Saturday morning. And what I really get out of it is uh, we all have to be concerned about mm -hmm. justice. Right, right. And we all have to take a role. So right. we're all politicians, really. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, that's that 10%. <laughs> yeah, that's that 10%. <laughs> okay. okay. 90% is the only issue. <laughs> well, now, in this particular case here, let's talk a little bit about that. I do know that um, you, you are the listed, i.e., person, originator, yeah, whatever, I am. of this Hatch situation, right? Yes, you know Hatch, coaching Hatch Coaching and Events. And yeah. and events. Mm -hmm. Just briefly, what does that, what so, does that say? So, um, for the last five years, since when I left the schools, I decided that I wanted to do my own thing. Okay. And I wanted to be, I wanted in my lifetime to leave a legacy piece that would be long-lasting. So, yeah. I, I know my real gift is empowering and working with people and kids and adults. So, I've done a lot of empowering events. And so, my company does that. It empowers people. It does one-on-one -on -one coaching. It does events event planning and it works with organizations to support them in their work as we do it so for 20 years I've done these music festivals and we give the money back sometimes it's not a back lot back to community back so to speak. community so and, yeah and, and sometimes people who are performing they will ask but you know Marvin Sapp is coming here from Marvin Sapp Mar he's like a world um, musician, yes. singer, bishop. Right. Um, he um, he, he has written in a book. Yeah, oh, he's I know good. He I wish <laughs> so, we had a little clip of that. I know. You, wow. We'll have to have the clip next Please, time. Yeah, next he, time. And he already has said he's going to be talking about life gifts. Right. Right. Love it. And he just put out. Um, um, a record called Close. I just love it. And, and yeah. listen, and he, he's going to be singing The Best of Me and um, the P Possess the Land. And he's bringing 50 books to give to the community. Wow. And can he's so excited. Clip, can you put that clip on your Facebook? Just a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I will definitely. Yeah, I put Facebook. it on there all the time. Put it on Facebook. Now <laughs> and, we, and wait, let, don't leave Patrick Lamb out because Patrick is Patrick, like the oh, yes. bomb. Hey. And so he's always <laughs> doing community work. And, and he's Oregon and product. He, he's and Oregon. He's Oregon. And he yes. came when I was at Jefferson's. We raised 66000 
and put wow. music back wow. in the school. But Patrick has such a wonderful spirit. Oh, very, very neat. And very he neat, is, very and sometimes I'll go, he'll, he's giving me free tickets, yes. the symphony to yes. hear him. And so he's coming, and then we have um, the Thank You So Much Band. It's a young group who just graduated from PSU. Really? And they are so good. They play. a clip of those guys? I will give a clip get of a them. Clip, and then I clip. have an African gospel group that wanted to be, they beg, could they be on this program? Really? So, yes, you can They're do that. Be there too? Yes. And then wow. we're honoring Bill Russell, who works with um, Gospel Mission, a right. homelessness and right. women, and Tamara Walker, who is doing a lot with children and youth and music as well. So she will be acknowledged. And then we have something called the Game Changer Award, where we're given three awards. Wow. And then we'll also be. Um, you know, we have tables. We have vendor tables that people can have for $100. But we're only having 10 because it's not about the vendors. Right. That's how we're going to stipend. That's how we're going to stipend up you, um, Marvin Sapp. But the, right. the, the real deal is about motivating the community. Motivating community. And Tony Fuchs is the uh, MC for the night. It's going to start on oh, time awesome. and end on awesome. time. Awesome. But I added some more time because we're bringing the Delphi school choir awesome. from Sheridan. They're driving really? two hours to get wow. to this event. Awesome. And they have told me they're so excited. So oh, it's wow. a diverse crowd. Oh, it's wow. going to be at the old church. The old church. And we're wait, just... wait, what's the location of that church? So that church is right, located on 11th right Street. Yeah, four, Did I put it? 1422 Southwest mm -hmm. 11. 11. It's in that museum. I had it. I wanted it at a, a classy kind of That's place. Downtown. Okay. And I love it. It's just so... Um, old church concert it, hall. It's just... Um, I, I like the environment was that when right? I do something, yeah. Okay, cool, so cool. it's and they gave it as a Downtown scholarship. Okay. Our early sponsors are United Way. United Way, oh. yes. One of my and, old employees. Yeah, and the that. Northeast uh, Coalition of Neighborhood. Okay. And uh, Dante James Equity, okay, cool, and he's cool. done every one since cool. I've been in Portland, pretty cool. much. Well, I tell you what, I know it's going to be successful because I remember how successful you were at Jefferson High School. <laughs> And, and also yeah. successful with those kids. Yes. I mean, the women basketball and the and the men basketball. Yeah, have a championship both. ring. Wow, you still have. Oh, she has a, she has a cha championship <laughs> ring, folks. Look at this, the championship ring when she was at Jefferson High School. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Wow, wow. Well, anyway, that's kind of a neat. A little bit more about the about that this background stuff. Oh wow, you got you know, you got you got R Russian arts projects for youth which mm -hmm. educate children in the Portland Public School District through the medium of art about the impacts of global climate change. I mean, that's the other thing, too. You know, we've got so many cultures here uh, within our country, for that matter, and too often we tend to, a lot of folks don't understand that. You know, I, re I realize, that, and just a little just a little side, I might throw my little quickie politics in that piece. I know that we have <coughs> English, uh, I know we have English as a second language, and that's been a kind of a, a, a situation that's really been a tough situation to sell because my thing is that is there's a mix. If they maintain what was the definition, we've always been a, a multicultural environment. But, my mm -hmm. point, but all of a sudden, when we take away the, the definition of English as a second language, the rationale for that is that we can at least have one, one, at least one roof, and then have all the cultures in there, right? So people should talk English so everybody can communicate. Well, that's good. But, but you know what I'm, I'm just kind of throwing that out. Or you could um, say we all need another language. I, I like that, which is English. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because <laughs> a lot of us don't I know. never really worry so much about that because I know the dominant language is going to take over. Yeah. And so that other one is the second. Yes, right, 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 right. So when I was at Nistra, I had more Latinos. But those people all end up speaking Spanish. Yes, right, I right, mean, right. But when they needed to really deal, we start moving toward English. Now, my nieces and nephews go to bicultural schools where they only do Spanish, right? Right, right, right. And that works for some people, but in our culture, we know. If you don't speak English, you can't go. There's a, a, a what's it called a glass wall or brick wall you get. So my little nieces and nephews, they be trying to do that thing to me. I said that's fine too, but you know you need that English too. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't go beyond a certain point. Well, see, you know, so I'm just kind of slipping it over real quick yeah. and take advantage of uh, I.E. the fact that when she was principal of that school and in that educational system, she was listening, and that's very very important. And too well, often you know that is that. so so good. Very I mean, important. I was like. Thinking about that, and I think that's a really critical point for relationships and for people's beingness, is to listen. Mm -hmm. And I do that with my nieces and nephews, and I, I notice in my family sometimes that people think that they can control how people are going to move, mm -hmm. but you know, at the end of the day, you're going to have to listen. You listen. I know nobody can do that to me. I know sometimes when I'm working on a committee and the person does a lot of really weird stuff, mm -hmm. 
They think they got over, but they yeah. didn't because you didn't even listen you to what I'm exactly, saying. Exactly, exactly. exactly. So know. I was really thinking about that today, that that's a critical skill mm -hmm. to be present. And you, may, you brought up another issue that's going to be very critical in this election. Just like what happened to Le David for the country is very critical. What's mm -hmm. happening to people in the Army that don't get acknowledged in death, I think that's a um, game changer mm -hmm. what happened to mm -hmm. him. And I've been following this story. But what was the game changer was the Congresswoman, yeah. how she was with that family, mm -hmm. and she spoke up for them. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about myself how when I was younger, I didn't have as much of a voice, mm -hmm. even when I came to Oregon. I think Oregon was culture changing for mm -hmm. me. So I think that listening and then helping people to have a voice. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be very critical in this election, that people listen to the concerns and they become empowered beyond where people think they have control of people, yeah, that yeah. they can actually deal with the issues yeah. and look at the issues and say, you know what, I, I want to vote for somebody who really mm -hmm. is going to hammer out the right proposal for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a whole new way of thinking because but, I think in the past, people think they speak for people okay. and you don't. Yeah, and, and just a little side note on that piece again, I, I still think that 90-10%. What's that? And, and major, media, major media is kind of like put us in a 90-10%, 90% media and 10% issues. Well, I think that the media is going to be more integral. You know, they're going to have more integrity. I think right now it's a game. Yes. And everybody plays a game. It's yes. all a game. Yes. We're going to yes. play another game, yes. right? Yes. 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 And so I think I was thinking about that today, that we can't have control. But if there are more people that start to use their social media for, for good mm -hmm. instead of for evil, it'll mm -hmm. be more even out. And, you know, that's a major learning thing, too, by the way. I mean, when, when, when we, before we picked this up, people wouldn't read the newspapers. Yeah, I know. They, 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 they didn't look at the news. Uh -huh. They weren't that familiar. Now, at one point in time, we had that as a class in school, remember? Oh, yeah, civics. that's true. Civics, uh -huh. right? I right? had civics. You had yeah, civics. We went. And, we <laughs> and I, remember, I remember reading the newspaper as part of the classwork. Oh, yeah, we had to do the news articles. Yeah, in yeah. the mornings and stuff yeah. like that and respond. Mm -hmm. And that was involved. Aspect. We don't do that anymore today. It's well, wait a minute. Now, I do. I know you do. But did. the regular people. Yeah, yeah. But they say people who are really smart, they're still reading those newspapers and they're using oh, yeah. that. Uh -huh. Now, I I can tell you something. I, re I look at this all Talk, the time. We're talking about this, folks. The phone. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's because in the Because the news is on all, there. And the bad the news, the yeah, good yeah, news, yeah, yeah, and you yeah, have yeah, to sort yeah, it, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And so, it, but like I said, we, we're getting there. We did one step at a time. And that's one I, thing about But I love it. I just love it because I can take this show and put it on in an hour. Yes, that's right. That's right. You, you I can just communicate. love it. And then, when you get, and then when you got the visuals of a person, you can't fake for so long. I know. <laughs> I know you that's can, right. You can't fake for so long. And you, I know. And, and, if you, and if you're not a good listener, you can't fake for so long. Right? Well, you know I'm I mean? going to go back to what you said because I'm hoping that all of the politicians oh, are yeah. starting to look at this oh, show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh, I yeah. just want to, like, say that resume. Oh, yes, that resume. That's key. That's key. They should be putting it together they right better now. Put it quick. <laughs> I, you know, where I come from with my background, I'm going to get it from you. And don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, everyone wants to run for office. But we're in need of leadership. And the definition of leadership well, let me just go, is solutions, well, let me, solutions to the issue. Let me just go back to my quote. Yes. And why I have this quote. Because I'm a middle child, so I watch. Uh, there's five children, two older, two young. I'm yes. middle. I pretty much play alone because there was nobody with me. And I've always watched, right? Yes. And so when I'm in an organization, I've always wondered why do the, the schools fail? Like, why do mm -hmm. they have all this Title I money yes, right, and they have right. all these teachers? Why, right. are they, why are they failing? Right. And I began to see early in my career that it was the teacher was how schools were ran, right? And I saw when the wrong person was put in place or the wrong pastor you in saw church. That. Yes. You could see over time the, the degrading. And you put an inspirational person and it lifts up. Then the person tried to grab that success yes. and put the, their friend there and yes. that goes down again, yes. right? Yes. So what happened? So inexperience always acts the same way. Yes. They don't know how to put the tablecloth yeah, exactly, on. Exactly. They don't know what time, yes. you know, they're yes. not checking proposals mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. skills. So I would just say that what you said would be the goal of the day yes. for yes. this yes. election yes. coming up. And, and it's going to be like a year out, right? We're going to be voting in the spring? In May, well, in May. In May, yeah. In May. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so but, they have running time, yeah, what, yeah. 10 months? Yep. Yeah. 
Yep, and we got we got the governor's race. We got the whole bunch. I know. I just say everything, do. right? So, no, no, we, we don't have any time to waste. I think <laughs> it's going to be a serious. I, I'm starting today. Yes, I think it's think? a serious. It's yes. going to be a serious. Very, very much so. Ten very months. So. Yeah. Fact, we're going to take advantage of this time too, since so we got a few minutes. Okay. We're going to be back again too. Okay. I, I know we. we so we're what very, you want to say uh, about this? Well, the thing is, no, I want to. Besides that, g give me give me about three or four minutes in terms of what do you think about Portland Public Schools today? Well, I, okay, there's a couple of things. Based One, on where you left to right now. Well, having been in the schools for almost 30 years, I would say the, the wheel of, of change grinds very slowly, and I was always ahead of my time. Mm -hmm. How I feel today was some of those students I work with have gone on to get bachelor's degree and master's degree, and that always makes me very happy. They, they check in with me. They, some, some of them have failed. Some of them that maybe went into pro ball or what that wasn't qualified, See, if you don't fail, if I can cheat with you, right, mm -hmm. but when you go to the next level, yes. you don't have anything to build on. So yes. there was also some failure. Mm -hmm. So what I think today, first I think we did the right thing with who we put on the school board. I okay. think Julia Brim Edwards and Rita Moore and the other guy were the right people. Now, I took a hit for that because I didn't go with color. I went with experience mm -hmm. because okay. I think I understood mm -hmm. very well what mm -hmm. was needed. And that time, we didn't need color. We need somebody to go in and clean up the system mm -hmm. yeah, and oh deal yeah. with the oh process. Yeah. Oh so yeah. I had oh to cross yeah. that line. Well, you got my ear. Uh, you guys had to cross that <laughs> yes, line, right? right? And sometimes I cross it for, yeah. for whether it's going to be a Republican yeah. or Democrat, what is right yeah. and what is yeah. best. Yeah. And so since I'm not needing no new shoes from you, I can just say what I want to well, say. Well, you went with the resume. I, I went with the resume, <laughs> right? And I haven't really been disappointed. Yeah. I went over to the celebration of Fabian. Because I started, oh, when I started, they were working on that. And very seldom in my lifetime do I see a project that begins and ends. But that project over at Fabian and Concordia, it's a win. Ah, uh, good, good, okay, okay. That college has totally picked up the students at Fabian in a holistic way, which we all agree is what kids need, and they're doing it. Right, and, right. and I was over at San Francisco, say, when they had Freddie Burke, and that's the kind of education that right. I worked into the training. Right with the Frederick School that was on the campus. So I would say it's not easy. It's going to take some time, but I think they're trending in the right direction. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Back in the, when, you, when you made the point about Julia Brim Edward, she at one point in time was on the school board. Well, you know, and she's, before, you know what, she's a good idea of well, who tough. can transition. Well, she's you tough. know, she's different this time. Well, you know, she, she, is, she is really she, different. She has, she has some good training. It's called Nike. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's like looking different, acting oh, yeah, different. Oh, yeah, and being, oh, yeah. I don't know. She must have oh, taken yeah, an yeah, empowerment yeah, course. Got, they no, must have no, put her in the closet. It's called Nike. Because I really like that the new Julia probably like she like. The new and we had a we had a comparable <laughs> person to her back in those days. His name was Matt Prophet. Oh Jesus! Matt Prophet. I love Matt Prophet. In fact, look on the look in my history <laughs> history portion of the Oregon Voters Digest. I interviewed. I had some interviews with Matt, and both of those interviews are on. I'm gonna the go show. look. It's so an awesome piece. when I was in California, I would go to all the reading conferences, yes. and more than one time, Matt Prophet was our keynote awesome speaker. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. And I just think that. We know Oregon hasn't not had any good leaders yeah, because yeah. they have Matt Prophet. Yeah, right. And Robert. in between there, I'm not sure what happened. Military. He, he had a military background, okay? He's good. That's how he came mm -hmm. into this system. But okay. I think we have a chance now to grow our own and to look and see, yeah. like, who yeah. are the people yes. of color we want to get behind? Yes. Yes. I'm not just getting behind anybody. No, 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 no. So who are those people we want to get behind? That's Let's right. get behind those people. <laughs> the, the, the people you want to get behind? Resume. <laughs> Resume. We want to make See, sure they read. Resume first. <laughs> it's resume first, and then you give me the name of the well, person. Well, you know, and I would add one more thing to the resume. Yes, right on. Let me see your portfolio. I heard that. I want to see like the examples of what you have done. That's and so part when of resume. I went that's to part of resume. Okay. That's so part when of resume. I went to Jeffins, that's what I was really looking yeah. and trying to build. And I think in Oregon they weren't doing as much of that as they could. So if somebody came with a lot of failing scores, why would you hire them as a principal? Well, that's what I looked at before I interviewed you. Oh, okay. <laughs> why would you, but I was saying, why would you do that? Well, if no somebody respect. would want to be a pastor and you never saw them pastor nowhere. I'm, and, I'm more interested in the kids as opposed to the politics. You're the right. Night, and so if you never saw saw that, why would you do that? Well, the thing is, bottom line, because because you're only 90% politics. And you don't even make enough money to cover that. So no. I don't really understand that, but I think the kind of self-esteem that's needed is what you have and I have. We don't necessarily need what you're doing. That's right. We want to have the best to the community. We know if we don't educate those kids, right. we're going to always be crying right. at, the, right. at that, right. con at, what's that meeting they have, that gain task force thing? That's right, that's it. I, I 
said sometime, I'm tired of crying. <laughs> I don't want to cry hey, no more. Hey. I want y'all to come up and be hey. president of the United That's States. Right. I'm not, I don't want to go to no more funerals. The days of wine and roses are <laughs> over. Right. I don't want to keep on crying. Affir affirmative action is gone. <laughs> if you're, I'm just being straight up. I'm straight I mean, up, too. I'm with you stuff. on that. I'm not yeah. a Republican, but yeah, I'm on that right. one. That's right. That's right. No, it's a resume. <laughs> Remember the resume. The resume. I'll leave okay. today All with right. the resume. Well, look, the last thing comment. I got about one minute. Let's, okay. let's go back over the, the right. that you're going to have. Let's talk about okay. where's, where's it going to be? It's going to be at the old church on November the Fifth. Okay, at and 1422. It's, and it's free. I want everybody it's to free. know it's free. But 1422 Southwest mm -hmm. 11. If you, can put that, if you can put that on the screen real quick, I'd appreciate that. It's going to be the Old Church Concert Hall. Yeah. 1422 Southwest 11th Street. And what's your phone number real quick? Okay, 971. 971. 331. 331. 5598. 5598. We have vendor eight. tables available. Okay, good. Okay, we got that. Well, hey, it's a pleasure. Oh, it's my I'm, I'm so excited. Exactly. It was yeah. just great. And we'll make sure we keep that announcement oh, going. Keep on announcing now okay. I want to come back from a oh, you will. politician get, time. Get, get those clips, and we're going to put that on real oh, quick. Oh, well, can we do Marvin Sapp? Yeah, for okay. sure can. And okay, and Patrick Lamb. Okay. Sounds great. We're going to take a short break, okay, folks, and we'll be you. right back. Okay? Take care. It was a great interview. It was good. Great deal. Okay. Okay, just stay right watch, where you are. Oh, yeah. You always have to tell me that. I guess I leave the stage really fast. Yeah. Okay, folks, here it is right there. The No Hate Zone. Wow, the No Hate Zone. In fact, we were talking about the No Hate Zone about two months ago when we started doing a series on racism and hate. Mm. Right here. Wow. We were doing a series. Wow. And, but we were missing one person. I was waiting, and waiting for him as a solution, if you will. And I'm talking about the guy who basically put this, put this business together. I'm talking about Sam Hatch. Sam, Sam, Sam Sachs. Sam, Sam Sachs. Stay out of the conversation. I was a gunner sergeant in the Marine Corps. Right, right, right. So I know how to deal with the troops. Right. Okay. You, okay. Yeah, yeah. And a warrant officer in the National Guard. So, okay. Oh, you're doing the National but, Guard? But, but you see that? There he goes again. See that? I'm, I'm, I'm getting rid yeah, of the I know. The I know. He's, he's a private today. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but anyway, folks, you know, on skinning aside, you, you've seen Fred here before, aspect of it. But the bottom line is that uh, we were. We were talking about the issue of race and and, uh, and and racism and hate. And uh, in fact, that's why that's why uh, Fred is here with us today, because he had some, well, he's very, very much involved in community. And very, very, very much involved for that matter. And too often, and a lot of times what happens, if you are involved in politics or people business aspect of it, you tend to be a kind of a target, if you will, on mm -hmm. the public side. You got me? Yeah. And that's that's just a natural. But, but he handles it pretty well. He handles it pretty well. And so he was able to bring to the table with Teresa, T Teresa Dupe and Don Dupe. We had series, if you will. And we talked about examples, if you will, within our own community. Not just the Portland black community. It was community across the board. Right. And its impact as an individual, impact as a community, and the like. And so we had some, some very interesting discussions. And so I just want to let you know that. But at the same time, from Sam's standpoint, you know, Sam, is, uh, you've had this program here. And one I want to, we would like to share with the, the viewing audience. I want you to spend a couple of moments and talk to how, you, how and what was your rationale for creating this, this, this business over here. Okay. 
Okay. Talk to us. So the No Hate Zone was created probably about about 20 years ago. Okay. Uh, growing, I grew up in, uh, I was born in Portland, Oregon. Okay. And I grew up in uh, Albany, Oregon. I went to high school. And as a young Jewish kid, uh, okay. sometimes I would um, be subjected to anti-Semitism. Okay. Uh, through, you know, in high school, uh, college. And when, uh, when I was confronted with that, I would use violence uh, to... Uh, to solve my problems, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes I'd get in a fight and I'd use violence. And so I got to a place uh, when I was older that I decided that violence wasn't the answer to um, fighting hate and racism. It just makes the problem even worse. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I wanted to use my head and my heart to try to fight against uh, hate, racism, and anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. And I was actually at a lunch with some family and I came up with the the name the no hate zone as a reminder uh, not only to uh, community and, and people that see it but to myself to not have hate in my heart because mm -hmm. I think it's 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 easy for all of us to you know when you're dealing with white supremacy when you're dealing with discrimination it's a very emotional um, issue and sometimes that hate or that um, that anger builds up inside you especially if you're a person of color or if you're um, a minority uh, you know, myself being Jewish. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was important to always remind myself to not have, to not let hate be the overriding mm -hmm. factor when I'm doing this work. Mm -hmm. And so now I, I use the no, the no hate zone to uh, try to end hate and racism in our community mm -hmm. through education, community engagement, and, and advocacy. And all three are important when you're doing this work. And also represent your own culture. Yes. In the Jewish community aspect yes. of it. You know, the reason why I brought that up is that uh, as part of that little series that we were doing, mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to interview a gentleman by the name of Ovi from, from Romania. Mm. From Romania. And his father had written a book. He'd written a book when he was Romanian. He was a, uh, this, uh, the, was it uh, socialist, communist country aspect of it. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he took his whole family. His dad brought his family here in the U.S., if you will. You know right. I mean? And boy, you talk about patriotic. My point is that, you know, because we have that beacon light, if you will, land of free, but we got many cultures. Right. You got me? Right. And in his particular case, and I'll just be brief, and, then, and I'm looking at what, what you're doing. That's one reason I want to throw this on the table, is that um, uh, his father, when he wrote this book, he basically said, okay, the English language, you know, and he, and he, he was, the, the, his, his son was always having fight in schools. Mm. And his dad mm -hmm. would always remind him, look, son, mm -hmm. when you come home, you speak English. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You keep speaking English, because you know I think was mimicking his, his his accent, his voice, and he was always kind of identifying with the Romanian aspect of it. And then after a while, once he learned the English language, he became white. Mm. That was the assimilation aspect right. of it. You yeah. got my point? Yeah. And and what happens a lot of times, in all due respect, when I when I think about the Jewish community, you know they they had so much respect for their culture that it just stayed, if mm -hmm. you will. Right. I Meaning you'd say something, you know, I mean, even though their skin may be white. They'd say something, right? As opposed to just right. assimilating and say, "Okay, fine, I'll just go along with you," and I'll just go on and say, "Okay, fine, I, I can be on the other side and still hate my culture." Mm -hmm. But they, but the majority of them do not. They, they're on, they're, they're on, on watch, if you will. Right. You know that point. It, and so I yeah. just wanted to throw that out to you, that uh, that sometimes that's the th that's the problem we're having. It's called assimilation. And that's, excuse the French, because a black, regardless of how smart you and how much English you have, yeah. you know, you, you, you can't assimilate right. too well. Right. You know I mean? And we've used that culture for years and years and years. And then sometimes it just spills over over here, here and here. And then we bring the minority thing to the table. And then it's Asian or this, that and the other. And sometimes we, we reinforce that negative by, and I'll be right up front with it, by creating that segment of mm -hmm. minority. Maybe we need to get rid of the minority deal and really focus on the assimilation piece. I mean, we're all Americans type thing. Mm -hmm. So I just thought I'd throw that out to your table, but I want you to continue on. But I liked what you're doing aspect of it, but I want to throw that as an introduction. And then I'd like to get Fred, we, we'll get involved in this deal in terms of where we were going from a local in terms of whatever. And the reason why I brought this up, and then hopefully we'll respond to that. Remember this deal, and I'll use this as an example. Remember the, the, the young man that was working for the attorney oh, general's yeah. office? Oh, yeah. Remember that? That oh, was yeah. big news right now. Right yeah, about, right it's big news right now. Okay, right now. No, not and, big enough. And, yeah. yeah. And see, and check this out. He was featured in the Scanner newspaper. Right. And it's a very short article. He was featured in the Observer newspaper. Very short article, so to speak. Okay. But he was featured in the uh, 
he was featured in in this the, the Portland Tribune. Mm -hmm. Very neat article, front page too, mm -hmm. aspect of it. But now this is the thing that gets me about this piece, is that uh, you know we got the Willamette Week within our midst aspect right. of it. We happen to know who the who the publisher is in mm -hmm. many ways, and it just so happened uh, one of them, uh, one of the owners. Wife actually is the attorney general. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Now it just so happens there was no article about that issue. Right. In the issue of the Willamette Week. Right. But on the front page of the issue for that particular week was here's it is right here the the white stuff. Right. And then it, it it went back and got this guy from a historical standpoint that was using the word nigger. Mm -hmm. And you know, and in all due respect, there was a there was an association here locally with reference to our, our just just elected f a, a, a city commissioner, mm -hmm. Daly, mm -hmm. and she had a little bookshop aspect of it, and she basically gave it, the story was in there, right? And it was, it gave gave him the opportunity to articulate that situation. You got my point? Mm -hmm. So so the thing is that we still may have that issue. I mean, I'm just asking the question: Well, why is it that he should publish this at this point in time? I would have liked another, because they do a heck of a job sometimes in terms of educating. That's what it is. It's an education medium. He should have been spending more time on what were the results of what happened on this piece. Because there were some interesting things about how this gentleman was fired mm -hmm. and how his wife working at the Urban League was working for Kitz Hopper at the time. Mm -hmm. And they both picked up this settlement aspect of it. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, so I want to throw that on the table. And then I'd like for I'd like for let's have a discussion, if you will, yeah. about this whole piece. And but besides that, but also talk about some of the things that you have been doing, and specifically that you like to target with reference to the issues that will help towards your goal, if you will, of getting to that point where the anti-hate whatever. Well, Go one on, thing before we get into talk this, to me. I would like him to talk about something that is incredible that he's done: the Rooney Rule. Mm -hmm. The okay, Rooney Rule here in Oregon. Okay. And not just what it means now that it's established. I also want you to share what you're trying to do with it. Where you? What is the Rooney Rule? You, you want to, hold on. So the Rooney Rule Thanks, in, in, mm -hmm. in the NFL in 2002, the, the NFL adopted the Rooney Rule, and it's That's the named, National Football League. National mm -hmm. Football League, and it's named after Dan Rooney, who's oh, okay. uh, passed away last year, the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the Rooney Rule says that any time an NFL team hires uh, a coach, that they have to interview one qualified minority candidate before they hire a uh, head football coach. The reason is that back in 2002, and even really since NFL began, there was a lack of minority coaches, even mm -hmm. though the majority of football players are minority. Mm -hmm. uh, so the NFL adopted the Rooney Rule and uh, attached a fine of about $500,000 if a team violates the rule. And in 2002, it became a rule. And since then, uh, well, the first year uh, hiring, minority hiring in the NFL went up 23%. Mm. So you saw a huge increase. Um, since that time, you've seen the first uh, two uh, black head coaches coach in a Super Bowl and the first black head coach win a Super Bowl, yes. which was Tony Dungy. Um, and in 2007, I was at Portland State University majoring in black studies, mm -hmm. and I was kind of following the... Um, hiring of their new football coach Tim Walsh had left the left the the team and they were going to hire a new football coach they interviewed one coach uh, his name was Jerry Jerry Glanville and they ended up hiring Jerry Glanville and they didn't interview anybody else hmm. which is the common practice in division one football really any football program in the in the country uh, right now there's about 14 black coaches mm -hmm. but again the majority of black uh, uh, football players are black or right, minority. Right, right. So I lobbied the state legislature hmm. with the support of uh, Representative Mitch Greenlick and then uh, Senator Suzanne Bonamici. Oh, okay. And we were able to get the Rooney Rule uh, as a law in the state of Oregon. So Oregon is the only state in the country that has a law for all six state funded schools. Wow. Anytime a head coach or athletics director, not just football, but baseball, volleyball, anytime a head coach is hired, they must interview one qualified minority candidate. Mm -hmm. This year alone, we saw the first uh, black athletic director hired at Western Oregon, hmm. the first black and woman athletic director hired at Portland State University, and the first black head football coach at the University of Oregon. Mm. And these are all hires that have happened since the Rooney Rule wow. was implemented, became law in 2009. Wow. Wow. And now 
Oregon State just promoted uh, Corey Falls, I believe is his name, to head football coach at okay. Oregon, Oregon wow. State. Wow. So when they have this game they call the Civil War, which we probably should get rid of mm. that name, mm. uh, when they have the game Oregon, Oregon State at the end of the year, you're, it'll be the first time in the history that you have two black coaches wow. coaching in this game. Wow. Uh, so it's it's historic. Oregon is leading the way. Uh, and in 2016, I approached city council uh, with the support of uh, Commissioner Nick Fish and uh, Mayor Hales. They also adopted the Same Rooney year. Rule really? model, and it's called the Charles Jordan Standard. Interesting. Yeah, Some right. So you know Charles Jordan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you big know. time. And you know his, his oh, yeah, historical time. significance. Yes, very much so. Right, so uh, they adopted the standard only um, at the awesome. request of Commissioner Fritz. We added women and persons of disability. So anytime they hire a bureau director, because prior to that, the the last seven bureau directors that the city hired were all right. white white males. Right. Um, and there really was no diversity. So in last year, they had, they adopted it. It's city policy. And uh, since then, they've hired two women of color. We saw wow. our first uh, police chief, uh, Portland police chief. Well, um, well now, right, right now. Uh, yeah, black, chief law. Outlaw. Black and woman uh, yes, awesome. police chief. Wow. Uh, I am so that's why that happened, about the interviewing. Well, you know, it's... Interesting. It's hard to measure the outcomes. Yeah, like yeah. if if the hires are a direct result of the Rooney Rule and the Charles Jordan mm -hmm. Standard, but we can see that prior to those, yeah, there was nothing. There was nothing, and there now nothing. this is what's happening. Wow! Wow! So it and the whole purpose for the Rooney Rule and the Charles Jordan Standard is to get people to think differently yeah. and then yeah. act differently. It makes sense, right? And so I've also approached uh, when we saw each other. I was testifying in front of County Multnomah County Council, right? And I talked to. Uh, Commissioner Never. Loretta Smith okay, and okay. Uh, Ben Duncan, the inclusion officer, and how about the chair? Were you able to get to her? I haven't talked to her okay, yet. Okay, okay. But we are going to bring forward a, a model at the county level, uh, and I'm also working with Congresswoman um, Suzanne Bonamici, who, and the Black Coaches Association. What about the governor? I haven't talked to the governor. You got to talk to the governor. I, I, I'll what, put her on my well, list. What about the chair of the Republican Party? Haven't talked. What to about you. the chair of the Democratic Party? I haven't talked to them. All right. Well, have you talked to Bruce Broussard yet? I'm talking to him right hey, now. You good man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Congress, Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici and myself awesome. And awesome. have have sent a letter to the NCAA, right. also encouraging them to adopt the right. Rooney Rule. Right. And so, uh, there's no penalty in Oregon, but you know, it's really a simple thing when you yeah. when you think differently and you well, open your mind. Sense. It makes a lot of sense. Right. And you're you're going to see a, a better. Uh, more diverse pool, and you really will hire the best person. Yes, yes. And, and that's what we've seen. Yes, yes. So wow. that's one of the things that I've been working on with the no hate zone. But I also want to get back, I don't want to take okay, too much time. Yeah. No, going on. But when you were talking about show. kind of uh, the history, you know, my my grandparents were Jewish immigrants from mm -hmm. uh, Vilnius, Lithuania. Yes. And uh, my oh, grandfather yeah. and his same brothers group, that same area. Yeah, came here, and they came to Portland, and they had a great life, and they, uh, you know, they... Uh, had a, had a business, and right. so the work that I do now is is kind of an honor um, to them, yeah. because Portland was such a great yes. city to them as, as yes. immigrants, and gave them a great life. Mm -hmm. uh, and to me, I see a lot of the the hate, the racism, the discrimination that happens mm -hmm. in our community, mm -hmm. and it could happen tomorrow mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. my people, yeah. just yeah. as well as it's happening to Muslim yeah. people. Yeah. And so we. I think as individuals in this community, whether you're Jewish or Christian or Muslim, yeah. black or white, yeah. we all have to be a part of, yeah. of making that change. Yeah. We have to educate ourselves because a lot of people in this, in this city have no idea yeah. about the sundown laws. They have That's no right. idea about um, the, the racist uh, wording that was in the Constitution, right? And so we have to educate ourselves about the history of this state and the city when it comes to racism and discrimination and then I believe engage the community, yeah. uh, build relationships. You can't just show up and say, yeah, I'm, right. here to, I'm here to help. You have, to, you have to volunteer, you have to be engaged. And then through that, you can advocate for change. Yes, yes, and yes. I think it's, it's incumbent upon all of us to, right. to do that. Right, right, right. And, that's, and that's what I do, and I've been doing it for 20 years. Um, awesome. Mostly as, as a volunteer, you know, outside of my real job. Mm -hmm. And now I'm trying to uh, just became a nonprofit with the No Hate Zone. Oh, good. And I'm trying to really focus on that work um, specifically uh, to, you know, help Portland because Portland really needs, really needs it. 
everybody's you know that lives here thinks oh uh, Portland's such a you know wonderful liberal city yeah. but there's a lot of racism yes, and yeah. a lot of, of yeah. un undertones people don't talk about it because they're afraid to talk about right. it, about it they're you know they're afraid to have right. A discussion and sit here right. and have this discussion exactly. Exactly. on TV exactly. where I could say something completely yes. Yes. crazy, right. Right? right? But that's part right. of the conversation right. exactly. is making a mistake. Exactly. Right? exactly. We're friends. Yes, right. right. That's right. And that's right. and so to, we need to have more of those conversations. We also and I, again I'll say one last thing. A year ago we started breaking bread, breaking barriers, mm -hmm. where we specifically focus on uh, the police and communities of color. Right. And we have once a month at Noho's restaurant we have. Um, Communities of color and police come together to sit down and have conversations. Now it's not for everybody, but um, we've had a lot of people show up, and and the focus for me, the reason we started it in NoHo is because we have a lot of friends of color, Samoan, Tongan, Asian, Black. We don't want to see them die at the hands of a police officer. We have officers that are friends, and we also don't want to see them kill somebody, but we want them to have. Um, some understanding of the community in which yeah, they're policing. Yeah, yeah. And so we've, we've been doing it for a year. It's been a great success, and we hope to, to build on it. The next one is uh, November 20th, and um, it's great food. And all we do is ask you to just show up and sit down and have a conversation like yeah, we're having. Yeah. Well, in all due respect on that note, two things. One, uh, we, we're going to invite you here at the Oregon Voters Digest periodically for you to use this resource, if you will. You got my fantastic, point? Fantastic, yeah. To, to, to go out there and to do your PR piece and educate, because that's a very key point. Educate, yes. and it also should be in the classrooms. Right, and absolutely. And then we might be able to put that within our school district, because when you think about Portland Public Schools, you figure that's where the majority blacks, our minorities, mm -hmm. are in Oregon. Right. So why not have that? program that you're talking about in that school district aspect right. of it. You got me? Right. And and uh, so that's a very important piece. And then, then, like I said, the other thing is to use this as a vehicle aspect of it. And maybe get Noho to come on down here. I will. I mean, Noho's not here. very, he doesn't like any, uh, and, th and appreciate you saying that, Noho likes zero praise or okay. zero uh, media. And I can I can just say he... It's what he's doing. It's not a, so tell him, tell him don't get personal. Right. <laughs> but him, he tell has donated. Gunny, tell him Gunny said, no. Just come, on, come down. on down. Don't get me wrong. He does have a restaurant. He's doing it. The idea is to try to get other restaurants right. to do the same thing. Because he donates his food, his time, and his space. I know that. I know that. And, yeah, it's, it's an admirable that. thing. Hold sure. on. The food's free? Yeah. The, the, no one has to pay for the food. Uh, we ask you to donate something, and then the no, donations. Fred, Fred, no, you can't go. Yeah, you, you can't go. No, you can't go. Um, we have. You cannot go, <laughs> Marine. You can't go. Now let's get back to our. Let's get back to our question. I didn't know the food was free. Oh yeah. my God, this guy. We asked for a donation. Yeah, you got but a donation. We want to make sure everybody can come. So. Oh, we'll get a check. Free. We'll get a check from him. Yeah. Give him yeah. Message. Okay, <laughs> Fred. Fred, why don't you reflect on this? Well, wait, give me give me an update on what you. Where, where are you now on the whole issue? Uh, well, this. What do you think? This whole thing goes back to what I've been telling everybody. What I'm learning about, my personal opinion about. The people who run Willamette Week. Yep. Mark Zussman, Nigel Jaquise, Meeker, Rosenbaum, they're all they're all a bunch of racists. I'm looking at the history of Willamette Week in Portland. And um, you know, I'm one of those idiots, you know. I have got a lot of old copies of Willamette Week going back almost thirty years. And you know, friends, I mean, I look back at the entire body of Willamette Week, and Willamette Week has never been an advocate for the black community. It's never been an, uh, an educated Maybe it's tool. because of their clientele. I mean, there's something well, you got to understand. Not, you got to eat. Well, <laughs> hey, I know some black people. I'm one of them that read them. They endorsed me before in the past. Um, I look at how they treated me last year, and then I look at how they let Chloe Udaly become a city commissioner without telling anybody that she had a white supremacist in her bu business. Most bookstores won't do this. They mm -hmm. won't allow a white supremacist to do a, come on their book tour in their business. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of rumors in this town of Chloe dating white supremacists. I don't know. People brought that up with me during the campaign. Mm -hmm. I told people I wasn't going to talk about it, mm -hmm. and I didn't talk about mm -hmm. it. I said, hey, if you find them, <laughs> got a picture of them together, <laughs> but otherwise, you know, that's not what we're going to talk about, you mm -hmm. know, in this campaign. I got to be honest, as a black guy, I'm feeling like I was a fool. Maybe mm -hmm. I should have talked about it because now they're talking about this. As opposed to the, 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 the deal right. about how this person was and, fired. And, and then yeah. that's a perfect example. That, Here it. you got a black guy who basically was the boss 
one of his subordinates broke the law and surveilled him. Yeah, yeah. Violated the law, violated his constitutional yeah. rights. He goes to Rosenbaum for, you know, basically to deal, deal with this. She fires the guy. The guy gets his job back. But, but because this guy sued the state, he didn't break any laws. They settle with him and say, hey, you can't work for the state for five years. Yeah. That's you understand? Good. Now, Rosenbaum, this shows where Rosenbaum's racism is in, in, in Willow Emmett Week. She's got to know of the appearance of racism here. Yeah. She feels so emboldened as her white self. This is not her Jewish self. Mm -hmm. right, right. She doesn't have to tell the Negroes. Yeah. Hey, Negroes, let me explain to you. I know this looks bad. A black man who's been wrong is making is being is being punished mm -hmm. for being wrong. And I know there's a long history in Oregon and everywhere else. That's not the case this time. I tried to fire the guy, and the court has ordered me basically to give the guy his job back, something I didn't want to do, but I'm going to follow the law. Mm -hmm. And um, what we've got here, though it may appear racist, this is why I hope you feel it isn't racist. Mm -hmm. Now, you know the type of person who wouldn't make a statement like that? A person who's racist. Mm -hmm. He says, I don't care what the Negroes mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. I don't care that the Negroes may think this is racist. Mm -hmm. I, it, you know what I mean? It, to me, it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. It's just like when I was talking to Mark Zussman you know, uh, you know, last month. Uh, and Mark uh, is the he's Mark the is the, the is the managing the editor of of Week. Week, and one of the partners. And you know, when I was talking to Mark, I said, Mark, you hire two minutes. Go you on. hire no black people to to write for your paper. You cover no black issues in a positive way. They don't even talk about what Sam's done. The Rooney Rule. Don't you think Willamette well, Week would think how many young people this affects? That should be that's front page. That you would understand? Be front page. How many? I, I want to, if I might Good say on. one thing before. Yeah. You know, uh, I read a quote where uh, the attorney general, mm -hmm. um, she said uh, she was sad to see yeah, uh, him yeah. leave. Right. Well, uh, I would call on her right now uh, to, if you're sad to see him leave, you have the power and the authority mm -hmm to amend or go back, let's call for a, a meeting, right. and let's give him his job yeah, back. Yeah. Yes. We can keep all his money, yeah. uh, we can amend the the, the uh, settlement agreement, right. but if we're sad to see him go, right, if you're sad to keep see it. him go, right. I, if, if I didn't want somebody to go, I wouldn't let him go. Yeah, yeah, I right. would say, you can, yeah, yeah. we're not, that's Take not, part of, that's not part of the agreement, yeah, yeah. he gets to keep yeah. his job. And this yeah. is a pattern that you'll see when these settlements is that they want the person who's been wrong to leave business. Friends, okay. I want you to remember that the one minute. is real quick, connected real directly to Diane Rosenbaum. Okay. That she basically quick, owns the Willamette Week. Okay. Well, gentlemen, as you can see, we got work to do. Yes, That's lots why of work. you got to come back. I will. Okay, I, and I, and I thank you for having hey, me. It's, a, well, it's Sam, an honor and a in pleasure. In all due respect, we're going to have an election coming up, and that's why you got to be coming back. Okay. Because we got to educate these folks and have that put on their resume. Right. Very, Absolutely. very important. Every one of them has to sign that contract. Yes. Okay. They have to sign that piece. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, good. When, Fred, it's always a pleasure. Always. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry for no, no coat today. What happened? <laughs> he wasn't even here. <laughs> anyway, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you so Appreciate much. that very much. He's a good man. Okay, folks, right. thank you very, very much for being here with us today, and look for us next week. We're going to be talking about homelessness. Boy, I tell you, you ought to hear about that one. Oh, yeah. Always going to be. And I have Joe Walsh, of all people, a Navy guy. Navy dude. Joe is very exciting. He know he's got a resume. Yeah. He's got a resume. Okay, fine. Take care, folks. See you next week. Join us. <laughs>